from our train people um it's been a while since i've actually done a meal prep video no excuses no reasons just been focusing my energy on some other stuff so i'm back i have to do a meal prep this week i have already done one portion of my meal prep and i'll show you guys what that is once we're done here tonight we're going to be doing chicken thighs with a sweet chili sauce or a red cock sauce <laughs> that's literally what it's called it's literally called cock branded red sauce so, <laughs> um, you can find that at No Frills. Um, I'm going to be using a bunch of stuff from Karen Clayton with Epicure. I'll be using my Norwex cloths as well, so I'll put that link down below. Um, I'm also listening to DJ Blighty on Mixcloud, so I'll make sure to put that link attachment on as well. Um, any of my other people with businesses, please go ahead and comment down below. Give yourself a little bit of a shout out. Um, yeah. So tonight I'm also going to be talking about power posing while we do our meal prep and the positive effects that power posing can have on you, whether you're going into a meeting or an interview or day-to-day -day life. Um, so yeah, uh, let's go ahead and get this party started. Uh, I've already got the water boiling for my veggies because I'm going to steam my veggies for my meal prep. I have my pasta already boiling. I have both my skillets ready because I'm doing two batches of chicken at the same time. So that's going to be awesome. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so um, for noodles, I went and I got the penne noodles from No Frills, you guessed it. Again, you can go out and get gluten-free noodles or pasta noodles, whatever you want. I put a little splash of oil and a little bit of Himalayan salt in. Himalayan salt from Dollarama on a budget, what's up? <laughs> um, I got that going in the pot back here, so I have a little bit of carbs to go with that. Um, I want to get my chicken on and then my veggies. So I'm going to leave the wooden spoon in the pan. That will stop it from doing any type of boiling over. Um, Sorry, I just gotta make sure the camera's always good. Um, now let's do the chicken. So, chicken has thawed out. So all I gotta do is basically clean it and then put it in. So I have three chicken breasts that I'm gonna put in each pan. I guess four times. Uh, so I'm gonna leave the chicken skin on because I want the extra, <laughs> the extra to it. So that's just what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna cut them apart because I want them in the full size. Gonna turn on the heat. veggies cut up and then my sauce going so first thing is gonna be the onion because I want those to saute and give some flavor so I'll move all of this stuff off to the side take care of this bad boy again I'm using one of the Epicure knives actually so nice little tiny paring knife Like the perfect amount of onions. Oh yeah, uh, power posing. It's a good thing that I keep my notebook by me because if I did it, man, like I would be all over the place and have no direction. So, uh, power posing. If you've ever heard of power posing, 
It pretty much sounds exactly like the title. If you haven't, it sounds exactly like the title. Um, you're basically posing in a way that makes you feel powerful. So, it's different for everybody, and it's because everyone feels a different type of confidence from whatever pose you're doing. So some people want to stand in a grounding pose, some people want to stand in a funny pose, a balancing pose, and it really just depends on who you are and what type of power you're looking for. So one that I always do in front of my mirrors is just the regular power pose. Just grounded, both shoulders back, chin slightly level, and just kind of look at myself in the mirror and tell myself, you are enough, and I love myself. You are enough, and I love myself. Sean, you're amazing. And that's just something that you do. And it's kind of cliche, and it's kind of stupid, but honestly, you do that for like 30 seconds, and you feel goosebumps, and you feel all positive and giddy, and like, you feel like a kid. Like, it's a good feeling to feel good about yourself. So, that's what my power posing is. Now, when you do power posing, you can do different types of mantras and all of this different type of stuff. I always just love to tell myself that I love myself and that I'm amazing and that I'm enough. That's something that one of my yogis has taught me as well, Kathy. So, I just have brought it into my everyday type of ritual, I guess. <laughs> Literally, it's pretty much every day. Done. Gotta get the rest of these peppers in with my chicken so that it can get all of that flavor. Uh, so, uh, power posing. When you go through your power posing, I would recommend to do your power posing for at least 30 seconds in front of the mirror. Um, but the more time that you do it, the better you're going to feel after. So I try and go upwards of 60 seconds. And again, it's just something small that you do to make yourself feel a little bit better every day. Because if you're not telling yourself you're amazing, who's going to do it for you? Like, yes, we get a significance to either at one point in our life. But if you don't know that you're amazing by yourself, there's a problem. Because you're fucking awesome. I mean, you're freaking awesome. <laughs> Ooh, that chicken that is starting to smoke it. I think I might end up putting it in the oven too and then slow cooking it a little bit because if I could get all of that chicken flavoring together, 
Ooh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. See, I plan a meal prep and then I end up doing something completely different. It's like, what the heck was the point of you planning it? I mean, I guess it's the same thing. I'm just changing my cooking technique. There's gonna be so much flavor in this chicken, I swear. All the peppers. Uh, so power posing, uh, 60 seconds in whatever stance you want. Um, I gave you my example of power posing, the traditional power pose here, but you can do your grounding tree pose with your foot down and then hands on your hip, or you could do your tree, or you could go to your half tree or your full tree, but you never put your foot on your knee, so it has to be up and into your thigh and then through here or down past your knee. So you gotta be careful with that one too. All right, this chicken's starting to smell so good. Uh, gotta keep that temperature down so that it gets all the juices. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. The pasta's pretty much done. Peppers. Peppers. Oh, I love peppers so much. mushrooms next and I'm just gonna do them in slices instead of pieces. I've been falling in love with mushrooms recently and if any of you know me I used to hate mushrooms but I need to really enjoy them and they're definitely a texture thing too so Oh, other variations of power pose. Uh, you can do meditation power posing, so sitting down with your legs crossed and then focusing on an intention for a day. So that's kind of more of a meditation, but some people found find power in silence, so you can do it sitting down. Um, and then there's also the power posing of like stretching and yoga and that type of stuff. So you can hold warrior poses and tell yourself how strong you are from your core down through your body, through your arms and your legs. And, Feel your body connect with that strength. Some people do that. Oh, and Warrior 2 pose just so, uh, those of you know what it is. I don't want to just Warrior 2 pose, your front foot is pointing straight ahead, your back foot is parallel, your heels are pointing together, your hands go straight out, your hips are still trying to point forward, you're looking straight over your index finger, arms straight ahead. And then this is your power pose here. So you dial your knee outside, nice and tall, and then you just kind of stand here for 30 seconds and tell yourself how powerful you are and you feel your muscles engage. <clears throat> All right, so almost done our mushrooms. Oh, I'm so excited to have and cook this chicken out too. Oh, that's gonna be even better. I'm gonna end up oven cooking my chicken. I'm gonna have this out and ready. I need to get my carrots ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash and scrub these down. All my noodles. Okay, noodles are definitely done. Let's get those are all strained. That's good. Let's get some
again, uh, the Norwich sponges are really, really good for this type of stuff. Like a couple passes and you can to get to go. And if you guys do want any Norwich stuff or have any questions about it, let me know. It's kind of that time where everyone's like, Sean, I kind of want some Norwich stuff. And I'm like, all right, here's the link. Take it. Use it. Utilize it. Get stuff for your people. Uh, if you want your stuff to be guaranteed in for Christmas, you want to have it ordered by December 3rd is what I think the notification said. So you guys got a little bit of time to prepare for that too. I have one more thing for power posing. So when you guys do your power posing, or if you decide to take up your power posing, you want to do it at a time that best works for you. So some people need the power posing done in the morning, and some people would actually prefer their power posing be done in the afternoon after they're done at work and they're going to the gym. And again, it comes down to honestly personal preference of what time best works for you. You got to go when it works for you and when it feels best. Um, Doing or adding something to your routine when it doesn't feel good isn't going to benefit you. So don't try and force something that doesn't feel good. Try something for three days and after three days, if you know that it's not working, you gotta try a different time or a different schedule or something. It does take three days for you to start a habit or a lifestyle, seven days for it to feel like it's part of you and then it actually takes 21 days for it to become a habit that feels normal. So yeah, power posing, 60 sec or 30 seconds minimum, or what I would recommend is 30 seconds minimum. 60 seconds is better. Tell yourself that you're awesome, that you love yourself, and that you can do anything that you put your mind to. And basically just embrace yourself because power posing is you cheering for yourself because sometimes we don't have cheerleaders and most people do have cheerleaders who are just on the sidelines and not like right there with you so make sure that you're cheering for yourself you don't always need a team I'm getting good at cutting, man. I'm getting good. Makes me feel good. All right, carrots. I'll stir the chicken around a little bit. Oh yeah. And because I guess I shouldn't put, no, I'll just put rice in and have, no, but I have rice. Okay. <laughs> My mind just did seven things at once. So I was supposed to be steaming the carrots and the broccoli together and putting that as my side. But now that I'm gonna be oven cooking the chicken, I'm just gonna put the veggies in with the chicken so that they get oven cooked as well. So they're fresh and soft and just really, really juicy. So I'm gonna do that instead. Now, I was going to, I could do a little bit of rice with it if I wanted, but I'm not going to do the rice because I already have a different meal prep, and I'll show you guys what that is. It's three ingredients, and it's the best thing ever. It's like a Lucian staple. It's rice salad. <laughs> uh, it's basically rice, hot dogs, peas, and corn, so four ingredients, sorry. Um, you cook your rice, you get your can of corn and your peas, you add the peas and the corn in with your cooked hot dogs, and then you mix it all together. And because it gets all cold, the hot dogs go all cold again. They kind of like, <laughs> So the hot dogs look uncooked, but they were cooked first. And it's just something that you do. So I used to eat this all the time as a kid growing up. It's like a staple, I guess. Well, my grandma used to make it for me and my brother and my sister. So it's like a staple no matter what to me, so. Um, that's what I'm using as my uh, in-between meals this week, so I don't need to cook any more rice by any means. Um, let me go ahead and cut up the broccoli a little bit, because I still want broccoli in my meal prep this week. I haven't had broccoli in my meal prep in a while. Oh 
yeah, that works perfectly. And so when you put broccoli in the oven, it's basically going to fall apart into its own little weird texture. So I wouldn't recommend cooking broccoli if you don't like weird textures, because you're definitely not gonna like broccoli like that. All right, so the chicken's kind of half cooked, not all the way cooked, and that's okay, because the oven's gonna take care of the rest of it. I'm gonna put the oven to 350, and we're gonna do the chicken in for about 20, 25 minutes to finish it off. So let's go ahead and scoop that into the pan. Mmm, that's gonna be good. So I also do think I'm going to put tin foil on top of it because I don't want it to cook too much. So, tin foil. This is the first time I'm actually opening this. And then I'll poke one or two holes in it just so that it can bend. And then I'll take a little snippet video when it's all done. That's perfect. Good job, Sean. Good job. So close, so close. And the cool thing about putting all the veggies in like this is that the veggies are now going to taste really good and not just taste like veggies. So, if you do really hate veggies, this might be a good way for you to enjoy them. Now the tin foil's not perfect, but that's okay, because I'm okay with that. Alright. Timer. We got 20 minutes on the clock. And now we get to clean up and go over our power posing. So, my people, when we talk about power posing, you want to find a pose that makes you feel confident, makes you feel good about yourself. Um, I usually stand like this. I got a wall of mirrors over there. I usually stand in front of those mirrors and do poses like this. <laughs> um, you can do whatever you want. Like I said, you could do your tree poses, arms extended. You could do your full tree pose. You could do your warrior pose. Yeah, you can pretty much do whatever positioning makes you feel confident about yourself. Make sure to get your best angle or whatever that is to you. Um, do it for at least 30 seconds and tell yourself that you are enough, that you love yourself, and that you're perfect the way that you are. And if you aren't at that place yet, tell yourself that you love yourself for the hair on your chin, or for the color of your skin, or for your curls, or for your earrings. That's not something about me. Uh, or for your earlobes. Like, Start with basics. You don't have to start with a huge, giant, like amazing title. Just start somewhere, start small, and start loving yourself. Um, yeah, that's gonna be my video. I'm going to clean up all of my goodies um, and then kind of call it quits. So, 
I hope you guys have a great freaking week. Make sure to wake up an extra 15 minutes early to give yourself time to be grateful, thankful, and set your intentions for your day. Make sure to write down everything in your journals, your food journals, your emotional journals, whatever journals you have, utilize them, um, and take the time for yourself. Self-care, much love from your neighborhood unicorn. Sean our training. Toodles! <laughs>